What's up, everybody? It's Whiskey and the Six. I'm Rob. Doing this for the first time from my phone in the Whiskey and the Six room. Uh, we're going to see how it goes. Try to get this chat set up over here if I can. Kind of had to rejig some things because my wife is teaching a high intensity interval training class as we speak. So. We had to uh, share technology tonight, so I'm using a tablet to read the chat, my phone to record. We got Red Beards racing in the house. What's going on? Derek, how are you, my friend? I'm going to have to try to read the chat from my phone, I guess. I don't know, because it doesn't look like this tablet's working too well. I'm not sure why. Maybe if I go back in. Yeah, it looks like that works better. But I still can't call up the chat on the tablet. Perhaps there's like some sort of chat settings on this tablet that... We let our son use this tablet, so that's probably why. I don't know. Anyway, I'll be able to see what you guys say on the phone. I'll just have to squint a little bit. Peter White's in the house. How's it going, buddy? So I got two Bomars here today. Um, I got the Vault Edition number one, which is the one right over here. All right, and the Vault Edition number two on my left over here. Now, these are actually really good, and they don't get a lot of attention. Um, these were both given to me by James Neal, who said he was going to pop by tonight in the chat. Mark Saliba in the house. What's going on, brother? Um, we'll see. We'll see if he pops by. I'm not exactly sure if he will, but I'm going to try to give these a review tonight if I can um, and see if that works out gonna taste them nose them all that stuff in just a sec I want to see if I can get the chat on here though because I don't want to have to keep looking at the the t the phone screen to get that going but it doesn't look like I'm gonna get a chance to no doesn't look like I'm gonna get a chance to doesn't matter I'll read from the very small text when it pops up just uh, try not to not pay attention so that I don't miss it um, hope you guys are doing well what are you guys drinking tonight what do you guys have poured I announced this uh, somewhat in advance a little bit earlier than most of my uh, lives I guess um, Jeremy won't be joining us tonight unfortunately uh, I was planning on actually having a few guys jump in tonight but um, it didn't work out with scheduling and technology limitations. So, cheers. Hope you guys are doing well. JD Single Barrel for Red Beards Racing. Awesome. Okay, so I'm not sure if Bowmore uses different styles of peat for different expressions. I guess the casking has something to do with it. Catherine Bono in the house. What's going on? She's drinking Spayburn 15. That's awesome. Um, Mark is drinking. No drinking tonight. Uh, thanks. Thanks, buddy. He's saying congrats for 10K. Brook Laddie Port Charlotte 10 year old. Very nice. Good stuff. Guys, don't get mad at me if it disappears too quickly. For whatever reason, it pops up for like a second on the chat. Mark Saliba, I'm thinking about pouring some Bowmore Lamerick. That's great whiskey. That is a great whiskey. Yeah, you should you should pour that. Um, that's probably my favorite Bowmore, to be honest with you. The Lamerick is likely my favorite Bowmore. Uh, easily one of the best Bowmores I've ever had. One of the best whiskeys, 14-year-old uh, whiskeys anyway, that I've ever had as well. I apologize uh, if you guys hear any background noise tonight. You will probably hear a fitness class in the background. <laughs> My wife is teaching a fitness class downstairs, so uh, there will be some noise. Peter White's down to one last bottle of the Lamb Rake. Yeah, that's, that's a great whiskey. 15 years, Rob. Okay, sorry. My bad. These do smell very similar. I know there is some cask differentiation between these uh, 
batches they use different I think they use mostly X bourbon for the batch number two and I think they might have had some sherry in batch number one of the vault edition uh, fifty one point five percent for the vault edition number one fifty point one percent for the vault edition t uh, two so um, nice ABVs on them whoa please use this for a very special 10k celebration wow redbeard that is insane my friend um i thought my eyes were playing tricks on me because i'm using my phone right now thank you so much man that is ridiculous um that is ridiculously generous of you thank you man thank you that was a huge super chat i really appreciate it thank you very much buddy So the, and I hope you're going to be there for the 10K celebration, that which is coming up uh, December 18th. It's a Friday night, uh, Friday night, 8.30 Eastern Standard Time. Um, I'm having a bunch of guests on, and the technology will be perfect that night, hopefully. Knock on wood, obviously. Um, but uh, having Roy from Aquavite, Scott from the Scotch Test Dummies, having... Um, Narby from Malt Reviews, and obviously my boy Jeremy from Super Social Club, um, and then also Jason from The Mash and Drum. So I think it's going to be a really cool night. I think you guys will appreciate it. A lot of the guys that you know and love as well. Um, <clears throat> but that's crazy generous. I still can't like I still can't get that out of my head. Red Beer, that's amazing, man. Thank you so much. Peter White saying that he had... Three bottles of the batch four. I think that was a Canadian exclusive. Jeremy, what's going on, brother? Thank you. Thank you so much. Cheers to you too, buddy. Um, yeah. yeah, that's a crazy super chat right there. That 10K night will be the start of my... I missed that. I mean, sorry, guys. This is going really fast. <laughs> I wish I could, I don't know if it's because my son doesn't have the app, or I think this is just like the straight website or something, I don't know. I wish I could call up the chat, but for whatever reason, I cannot. Oh, well. It is what it is. Not going to happen. All right, so 21 of you guys in. I'm going to get this review started. I'm going to try to keep up with the chat as much as I possibly can. Thanks again, Redbeard. This one's for you, buddy. Cheers. Okay, so... A little bit of like a salted peanut note on the nose here. Very light smoke. This is an older bottle. These were um, pours out of the bottle. So I didn't get the whole bottle. But I do remember I've tried this Vault Edition 1 a dozen times before. And every time I've tried it, it was very impressive. A decent amount of peat, but it's kind of subsided, I guess, as the bottle has gone down. Yeah, on the palate, still there though. It's a nice ashy peat mixed with like that salted peanut, like almost caramel. There's a nice multi note on this one as well, which to some might suggest it's a bit young. It's, it is an OH statement, so it's possible. Good stuff though, I, I really like that one. Um, I'm going to taste it one more time, and I'm probably going to give these a mark tonight as well. So, 24 people in the chat. What's going on, guys? Hope you're doing well. Like I said earlier, if you're just joining us, <clears throat> I'm doing this off my phone, so I'm going to try my best to keep up with the chat. I do see it. Um, I thought I would be able to bring up a tablet and read it off of there. Never had these vault editions. Wonder if they are similar to the old uh, discontinued Tempest. Uh, I've never had the Tempest, so I'm not sure, to be honest with you. Uh, Sasha saying, good evening, folks. Good evening, Sasha. And Mark is saying something about the red letter, but I missed it. Um, how is that red letter? I haven't tried it. Is it similar to the original red letter, the one that was in that big wooden box? Oh, okay, uh, they're saying it's easy drinking. 
I think the only reason I didn't pull the trigger on that red letter is because it wasn't a higher ABV. I know that the origin they wanted to stay as close to the original recipe as possible, which was a 40% whiskey. Uh, it was unchill filtered back then. Yes, it is similar. I'm I'm curious because I know that right after there was another batch of red letter right after that wooden box version, and it wasn't as viscous. It wasn't as good in my opinion. Uh, I wonder if it's because they decided to chill filter it, keep the same recipe, but chill filter it. Um, because a lot of people were returning the original red letter, the the wooden box one to the LCBO because there was floaties in the whiskey. And that was only just because it was uh, not chill filtered. 45% non chill filtered. Interesting. Okay, so they kept it the same. Yeah, no, I said 45. I didn't say 40. Yeah, no, 45 is a, a decent ABV. Um, but I was hoping for a little bit more. I know the original recipe was 45, so they wanted to stick to that, and I don't blame them. Cool bottle. It was great whiskey from what I remember. Going to go back to the one, taste a couple things, and then... Uh, and then give these to a mark. Very curious what you guys are drinking tonight. A few people have already shared. Uh, Steve's having a Glen Farkless 105. Peter White, uh, the one advantage of living in Windsor from Mark Saliba. Yeah. Yeah, nice and close to the distillery there. Nice multi note coming out of the first one. Edition one. This is hard to come by now. Original was also in the 12 year range. This one's 15 years old. Yeah, there is an age statement on the bottle. La 40 cash drank um, version three is what Go Habs is drinking. Nice. <laughs> Chris Saliba is saying another Saliba. Chris, Chris and I had a conversation about this already. Arthur is drinking the Glendronic 15 Towny Port. I remember that one. I had the. Did I have the 15 or the 18? I think I had the 18, actually. I had the 15 virgin oak. Or was it a 14 virgin oak? Peter White's uh, drinking Devil Cask 3, the Bowmore. Very nice uh, Bowmore. And then I missed that last comment there. This is good. Um, I don't know if it's become a little bit more tame over the years of being open. I'll show you how much is left in the bottle. Yeah, uh, Glenn Farkless 105 40 year old. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, so not much left in this. Derek said something was $97. <laughs> I apologize, guys. This, uh, this chat's going a little quickly for me, and it's a little far from where I am. I look away for one second and I miss it. Good stuff. I like this one. Um, based on. Peter White saying, I think the 200, yeah. The, so the the edition one was 200 bucks at the LCBO and about 180 out west. So not much cheaper. Um, I'm going to tell you which one's better right now because you can still get the edition two for about 190 out west. But I don't think the edition two ever came to the LCBO. It might have. I'm not sure. They're very similar. They're very, very similar. Right now, the Edition 2 is holding a little bit more peat, which I really like. Um, but that's probably because it's it was a fresh cracked bottle. Um, he poured a couple samples for me uh, into, and then I ju he just threw them in the box for me. Um, the Edition 1, he gave me the heel, and I would assume it's been open for a few months, I would say probably about six months to almost a year based on the way it's drinking. Um, <clears throat> I like the amount of peat that I'm getting out of the addition too. So if this is known to be a little bit more peaty, that's probably my preference right now. Addition one is really good too. Are these worth 200 bucks? That's a tough question because 
if you if you're a big Bullmore fan, they probably are. Um, I'd like to compare these to the Lefroy Lore. Um, see which one I preferred. I think that's a tough one. I think I might prefer the Lefroy if I'm not, if I'm being perfectly honest. But I remember loving this, and I'm I'm really liking it right now as well. Based on the way it's drinking tonight, I would say the addition one is probably an 85, 86. And then I'm going to take a sip of water and then mark the addition too. Addition two, a little more smoke on the nose, definitely a little bit more bite, but it, I don't get as much maltiness. Maybe that's because of the amount of heat I'm getting out of the addition two. Um, oh, there's another super chat in there. Super Social Club with his classic 666. Thank you so much, buddy. Um, am I missing something? This Did I miss one? Guys, I apologize if I missed the super chat. I can't really tell. Um, but thank you, uh, Jeremy. Really appreciate it, buddy. Jeremy um, and I usually go live together, but tonight I knew that was going to be a problem because my wife's using the laptop to, to teach her Zoom class. Or it's, just, it's not Zoom. I shouldn't say that. If she hears me say that, she'll kill me. Um, it's a high-intensity interval training class. So... Um, She's teaching that. She takes uh, priority, unfortunately. The Tempest was a 10-year-old cast strength. Yeah, I remember, I remember seeing that. It's a Zoom class. <laughs> we'll check. Breakout. Yeah. Um, I actually, I have a school, like a, a work laptop, but I just, I left it on my desk today. So I didn't bring it home, which my boss would kill me if she found out. Cause she wants us to take them home just in case we get locked out at some point and we'll have them at home. Um, okay. I'm going to say that the addition to is a solid 86 and the edition one is a solid 85 uh really good the value of the bottles that's a tough one because they are pretty expensive i want to know roughly how old the whiskeys are in here i would say that it's a range from like 8 to 12 uh i would say probably more 11 and 12 year old whiskey in these than eight um but probably a, a blend for sure I remember the Tempest being pretty reasonable in price. <laughs> yeah, exactly, go Habs. Um, <laughs> definitely not on that that computer. Uh, Timothy is saying the 2011 Bowmore Tempest 10 year old was 74 bucks. Yeah, exactly. So for these to be 200, maybe they're actually closer to 15 years old. I could be wrong though. Um, although that was a cash strength, these have been brought down a bit, right? So uh, 51.5, there's got to be a bit of water for it to be that nice round number uh this one's interesting though 50.1 i'm not sure how they came up with that at abv um but i don't think they're cash ranked i think if it was cash ranked they would say it right on the bottle or the box and it doesn't um batch two was 56 percent yeah okay it's possible that these are very close to cash strength probably brought down maybe three four or five percent tops um, and I would say that they're probably a little bit older than the Tempest based on the pricing that they chose for these. Um, also, they're, they're suggesting that these are higher quality casks, which I'm not going to argue with. I like them a lot. Um, 200 bucks is a lot of money. And if this is a try before you buy kind of whiskey, in my opinion. Okay, so try before you buy it. Uh, big thank you to James Neal for sending these over to me actually he made the trip over 
uh, from Hamilton, I believe. So thank you very much, buddy. Really appreciate it. These are really good. I'm going to enjoy the rest of them. Um, let's turn it to you guys. Yeah, 200 is a portion of the rent, exactly. Uh, Lamb rags were like $100, 15 years old. Devil Casco was 106 Yeah, honestly, you cannot argue with the prices on those two whiskeys. In my opinion, two of the best things I've ever tried from Bowmore. I've tried some older Bowmore. I've, I've, reviewed, uh, I've reviewed the 25-year-old. Very curious to try like um, the Vintners 18, 26, and 27. I've never had those, but I always wanted to. Uh, really want to try the edition one. It sounds like it's great stuff. Yeah, it's a little lighter on the peat than the edition one, or edition two, sorry. The edition one is like a little bit more salted caramel, some peanut notes, multi notes. It's it is really nice. It is really nice. Thirty four in the chat. What's going on, guys? Hope you're all doing well. All right, we're about twenty one minutes in now. Probably have. Uh, some space to do one more whiskey. I'll keep, I'll move these up a little bit. Yeah, Bowmore acts like McAllen now with pricing, limit, uh, limited releases. So what kind of peatiness would you say? I, I think I can get that back somehow. Um, it's, it's not your bar, uh, Redbeard's asking what kind of peatiness. It's not your barbecue style peat. It's your, um, it's your Isla style, but not quite ashy, like asphalt, like Laphroaig or Ardbeg. Somewhere between um, a Lagavulin and a Laphroaig, I think is the best way to put it. What's up, P-Boss? Hope you're doing well, buddy. Um, guys, I apologize if I'm missing your comments. I was relying on this stupid tablet over here, my son's tablet. Um to get the chat and for whatever reason I can't do it it's not working on here so unfortunately when when the um, chat pops up it pops up on my phone for like three seconds and then disappears so I have to be very quick if I turn away for one second it's gone um, so technically this is acting as my review for Monday the joys of technology, exactly, especially when you got to share it with your wife that's teaching a uh, high intensity interval training class as we speak. I'm surprised we can't hear her that much. Um, maybe you guys can. I'm going to move these off to the side and I'm going to grab something else off the shelf over here. I'm going to let you guys choose, actually. What do you guys want to see? Something over here. We got some Shelter Point, we got the Lafroy Cash Rank, we got the Aaron 21. Glenallachy 10 batch 4, a couple of tan dues, the 12 and the 15. There's some rum in here, lot 40, bunch of single casks, some amaru. If you guys have uh, watched my channel before, maybe I should move out of the way. On this side, we got the Altmore 18, we got the Vega 28, we got the Irishman 17, uh, the Glen Alki 11 Moscatel wood finish. You guys can choose. I'll let actually, you know what? I'll let Redbeard choose tonight. He says the Jeremy's saying the cask of dreams. Uh, seen the Lagavulin 12 special release yet? The 2020 I haven't seen. Tamdu 15. Yeah, that's a good one. How's the Irishman 17? The Irishman 17, I like it a lot. It's very Irish. It's very fruity. So if you're a Sherry Bomb fan, you're going to love that whiskey, especially if you like Irish whiskey with Sherry. Um, sorry, distracted by baby girl. No worries, man. I totally get that. Um, yeah, I was saying that you could choose, Redbeard, what, what I'm drinking since you did that ridiculously uh, generous donation. The list, the list is a couple of shelter points from BC. Um, Lefroy 10 cash strength. We got an Aaron 21. We got the Tobomori 19 Marsala. We got the Lot 40, uh, the Dark, or some Dark Oak, sorry. Um, a 22 year old Mortlock independent bottle. Two Tandus, the 12 and the 15. Glenallachy 10 batch 4. We got a Tequila. Uh, it's the Additivo Extra Anejo. We got a Vega 28 year old. 
Glenn Alecky, 11 year old Moscatel. Altmore, 18. Brook Laddie, uh, Bear Barley, 2008. Uh, a 24 year old Klein Leash, cast strength. It's an independent bottler. And then a couple Amroots, the heavily peated port uh, pipe Amru and the Naranji. Glen Fittick Cask of Dreams. Um, a distillery only Akintoshin uh, PX 12 year old cast strength. And then an SMWS Banana and Flambe rum. So, oh, and there's another rum here too the Kill Devil rum. And the Irishman 17 single cask. The Mortlock sounds delicious. All right, let's do that. You got it, man. All right, so this is the, the shelf behind me that gets neglected all the time, despite the fact that they're all there to be reviewed, especially if it gets pushed to the back. And it's for no good reason. It's just because I have ADHD, I think, and... Um, I like new shiny things and when I get a new bottle, I forget about what I had, especially if they all came in at like roughly the same time. And then, yeah. So that's this 22 year old Mortlock. It's reversed for me. I'm hoping it's not reversed for you guys. All right. 54.2%. Uh, Jasper was kind enough to allow me to buy this off him for his cost. I don't know if Jasper's in the house tonight. Good color on it. Yeah, it's nice. Looks good on this end. Yeah, it honestly, when I first opened it, I was a little concerned. It had a little bit of that sour oak note that I wasn't a big fan of. Looks like bourbon. Yeah, it's it's got a nice color to it. Uh, sherry cask. I think it's a first fill sherry cask. If I'm not mistaken, I don't want to miss the chat. Um, oh, it says adults do not res regularly exceed three to four units daily for men, two to three units daily for women. <laughs> it sounds like Europe has a higher threshold than North America. I think it's uh, two for men and one for women in North America. Peter White saying he snoozed on this bottle. I did too, actually. And then um, I was hearing a lot of good things. And I knew that Sasha's saying he has the Bunna 27. Waiting on the McAllen 18 Sherry Cast to come in. Yeah. Um, I was only able to grab this because Jasper got it. Units. Yeah, I want, I want to know. I guess that's an ounce unit. <laughs> I don't know what that means. 1.4... Units, UK units. It's a glass. It's just a so thirty-seven point nine units in a in a bottle. I guess they're trying to say. So then, one point four would be less than an ounce because I think a bottle is like twenty-six ounces. So this does have a bit of that sour oak on the nose, but it's it's masked quite well with some really nice like fruity notes it's not to the point where it's off-putting but it's there I think that's why this got pushed to the back a little bit palette has a bit of it as well but overall nice nowhere near as much as I got like on some of the ex the heavy sherry expressions that I've had in the past this is still very enjoyable, I'm not gonna lie. This is still really good. It does have a bit of that sour oak, but it's tolerable, definitely tolerable. What are you guys opening for the holiday season? So it's not gonna be the same this year, but I'm sure everybody's gonna make the best of it. So what are you guys opening for the holiday season? Yeah, Peter White saying maybe I didn't snooze on it. Yeah, you know what? It's good. I think, honestly, most people will like this. I just, I'm very sensitive to that note now. So, um, I'm not sure. 
I, I'm not sure if you would like it or not. I'm very, very sensitive to that note. <clears throat> it's really good, but it does have a little bit of that note, which is going to bring down the mark for me a little bit. I would still say it's between an 85 and an 88. I'm not going to officially mark it tonight because I'm going to do a review on it. Yeah. Yeah, definitely between an 85 and an 88. I'm gonna add some water though. See if anything changes. Did you say you're not sensitive to anything or you are sensitive? So, Red Breast 12 year old cash strength is awesome. Jeremy said something that looked uh, interesting, but I completely missed it. Opening for Christmas, Brewer 21, cast strength, 1981. Wow. United Distillers. Very cool. Uh, working on the Tandu 15 and Knob Creek single barrel. Mac Edition 4 for Red Breast. Nothing uh, but Deanston 20. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the, that Deanston 20 was awful, but... For me, anyway, uh, it was like heavy, heavy, heavy on that um, ammonia note. This is not entering ammonia territory, but it's got the sour oak that I think builds up to that eventually. Red Beer is saying McAllen Edition 6. Nice. Some people absolutely love that whiskey. Some people absolutely hate it. I think within the week, we've seen a video that, or a, a reviewers that trashed it, thought it was like, not even that, like, it's good enough to be a mixer kind of thing. And then a reviewer that said it's one of the best whiskeys he's ever tried. Uh, so, uh, I don't know. I, I think I gave it an 86. And then I said, like, it could be an 87 as the bottle opens up. Yeah, uh, Timothy, that bottle sounds insane. That bottle sounds incredible. Yeah, this is good. Uh, with some water, definitely that sour oak subsides quite a bit. But I would say also some of the fruitiness goes away. So maybe it just needs to sit in the glass a little longer. I think I know why I pushed this to the back though. Because I was hoping that it would open up and get a little bit um, cleaner. Because you could tell that there's some really nice notes in there. Indy, what's going on, buddy? Nice to see you, man. Um... You can tell there's some really nice notes in there, but I, I let it go down a little bit to see what would happen. Yeah, Sasha's right. Uh, the LCBO is in rough shape these days. Like, nothing interesting, nothing good coming out. Actually, the best thing that I've seen at the LCBO in the last little while is that Johnny Walker that I bought. The celebratory cask. I think I will kill off the Bell Blair 1993 cast strength. Honestly, that GNM is one of the best GNMs I've ever tried. That uh, Bow Blair 1993 cast strength. Yeah, it was very good. I think that was my whiskey of the year, year two. We're going on year five, guys. This is crazy. I, I can't believe it's been five years on this channel. It'll be five years, I think December 22nd or tw uh, 23rd. Another example of aged whiskey doesn't necessarily make it better. Yeah, exactly, uh, Redbeard. Oh, man, it's going too fast. Um, let's see if I can get that back. Uh, the wild thing is the LCBO actually has the goods. The goods are literally chilling in the warehouse. Yeah, you're right, exactly. Um, LCBO has a policy putting malts older, six to eight months. Yeah. It's sad what's going on at the LCBO. They literally have the buying power to embarrass the rest of Canada. And they're the ones that are getting embarrassed, to be honest with you, because every province that, well, not every province, but a bunch of the provinces get some really good stuff. And we're always left with our, uh, you know what, in our hands.
Yeah, this is getting better. With a little bit of water. Less of that sour oak, for sure. LCBO is a joke. Balls in our hands. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly it. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of water really helped this one. I'm going to revisit these bad boys over here. Oh, yeah. The addition one... Nose is just drastically improved. We need, Jeremy and I need to do another um, podcast just so we can like uptick the negatives for the LCBO, why they suck so bad. Terrence is saying for holidays, Ardbeg Ugadal, email the LCBO every other day. <laughs> yeah, Peter White goes at them pretty hard. <laughs> Yeah, keep the emails rolling exactly well. <laughs> you know what? I heard BC Liquor sucks, but I never really bought from them, so I, I can't uh, attest to that. Howdy, y'all. Um, what's going on, Chris? I think that was Chris. Sorry, Chris. Uh, if that was you, in case you've missed it, uh, the chat's going a little fast, and I'm doing this from my phone, so I'm missing quite a bit. Uh, yeah, it was Chris. Santa Cruz. And what's going on, buddy? <clears throat> Actually, I think I got to bump this one up a, a grade. That was a really nice sip. The nose is, has really opened up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give these ones a tie. This is 86-86. Uh, if you want a little bit more peak, go with the Edition 2. If you want a little less peak, go with the Edition 1. Nice multi notes on the edition one for the Bowmores here. I wonder how much of a difference there is in the blend here. Actually, now that they've opened up quite a bit, even uh, the edition two is drinking a bit better. Actually, this Morlock right now is the worst thing on the table compared to the two Bowmores. I don't know if it's because my my palate has become more peat-driven than sherry-driven, but there is that sour oak note that I'm not loving about the Morlock, which kind of brings down the mark. Uh, it might end up being a little bit lower than an 85, actually. Maybe blend edition 1 and 2. For shits and giggles, yeah, that's not a bad idea. <laughs> Redbeard, do not apologize, man. It's on my, it's on my table. <laughs> you didn't make me buy it. This this table is a little unstable. Um, it's on my, my review table over here. But the prices are ridiculous. Yeah, I I don't agree with the prices. To be honest with you, I think they are a little high. Um, I think. Plus fifteen percent tax. Yeah. Um. I wonder what, what do these go does anybody know what these go for in the US? Yeah. Ontarians are definitely starved for selection. I think Jasper knew what he was uh doing. Yeah, exactly. I think Jasper tried this uh Mortlock and is like, Yeah, you know what, I'll let Rob buy it off of me for cost. <laughs> That's probably what happened. You're right, Peter. <laughs> Jasper probably bought three of them and then tried one. He's like, yeah, this sucks. I'm going to let Rob buy one off me. Yeah. I'd, I'd say I'm going to stick to those two marks just because... I'm really enjoying them, but I think the price weighs them down a bit. Not sure on the addition to the addition to uh, Did it come to the LCBO? Do you guys know if it came to the LCBO? Let's see. I'm curious what the price, what the global price on these are. Is it just expensive in Canada? How long has it been open? The addition one's been open probably for a very long time. The addition two was like literally a neck pour. Uh, yes, 200. I missed out. What's the ABV on the Bowmore edition? So 51.5, Chris, on the um, edition one. And the edition two is 
They are 70 quid in the UK. Okay, so uh, a little less. If you were to ship, like if I were to buy them from a UK site and get them shipped here, it would cost me 140, um, maybe 150 all in after like paying the duties in Alberta, getting it shipped over here. So 70 quid works out to probably be about like 120 Canadian, 130 max. Um, so that's 100 for $130. I think these are excellent. For closer to $200, I think you're pushing it. Vault Edition 2 is still available in Ontario. Oh, it is available in Ontario. Okay, there you go. Vault Edition 2 is still available in Ontario. If you're a peat head, you're going to like the Vault Edition 2. $130 Canadian is a steal. Yeah, I would buy multiple bottles of both of these at $130 for sure. Really like the multi-note that I'm getting out of um, the Edition 1. And it's still kind of there with the addition two, but there's a little bit more peat, which is nice. <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to have to put this. You know what? I don't know, man. The more I sniff and taste this Mortlock, the 22-year-old, um, the this one right here, guys, the more I get that, that sour oak that I'm just not a fan of. And, and you know what? It's too bad because I know that there's people out there that love it. They love the Deanston 20. They love whiskeys like that. Deanston, in general, kind of puts out whiskeys like that as a whole. Um, but I'm not digging this Morlock. And the more I sip it, the more I'm realizing that. The more I'm enjoying these Bowmores because of that Morlock. Um, the Alberta price is going up and charging Ontario. For, yeah, that's happening. Um Deanston offering, uh, Deanston 12 coming back, $92 Canadian from 72 Yeah, yeah, the the prices of Deanston is getting insane. Paul Bovis in the chat, thank you so much, buddy. Um, one of my Sixer crew uh, Dram Team guys, thank you very much, buddy. really appreciate the super chat. Uh, Claire the Third saying, you getting any B-Tax in Canada? The, the draw should be soon. Super uh, 101. They're having a conversation on the side there. Aaron 21. The Aaron 21 is really nice. It's Thanks, Paul. Appreciate it, buddy. The Aaron 21 is really nice. Um, if you're a big sherry guy, you're going to want to go with the 18 instead of the 21. But the 21 has more balance. You could tell uh, they took um, like multiple casks. They tried to marry the best possible whiskey they could. Uh, really good. Really, really good. I'm going to review that one soon. Um, I gave somebody a blind tasting recently, and that one came out on top. Uh, it wasn't me tasting them, but I, I probably would have agreed as well. <clears throat> Peter White, don't tell them our secrets. Um, Aaron21 was the LCBO. I missed that. It just disappears so fast, guys. I apologize. But I'm glad you guys are enjoying each other's company and uh, having a nice chat. Um, I, I really wish this laptop or this tablet would have at least let me see the, the chat. That's right. So Timothy is saying that the LCBO exclusive was a 20-year-old cast strength Aaron. How was that? I never had a chance to try that. It seemed like it was reasonable. The uh, $101 bottle for uh, I bought for... Oh, okay. Uh, so Redbeard buys a bunch of stuff and sends a bunch of stuff our way. And it goes to Jeremy because um, Jeremy has the connection in the U.S. that brings it over. And I never see anything that Jeremy <laughs> gets that, that Redbeard sends for us. We're supposed to share them, and then Jeremy steals it. Uh, pay for the U.S. <laughs> Thanks so much, um, Chris. Really appreciate it. Oh, was that Richard? That was Richard. That was Richard, yeah. Oh, okay, That's there we go. Now I figured out a way to get these this chat back. Pays for the tax using Redbeard's super chat. <laughs> Thanks so much, buddy. <laughs> Richard, thank you so much, buddy. 
Appreciate it. Jeremy with the connect. Yeah, Jeremy steals all of the whiskey that you guys send to us to share. So just keep that in mind. He steals everything. <laughs> guys, thanks so much for the, uh, so much for the super chats tonight. Very, very generous. Um, so what's the, what's the COVID situation going on with you guys right now in Ontario, pretty much everybody's slowly locking down to the point where it's just like families allowed in, in each other's houses. Um, families as in like the people that live in that house and pretty much like restaurants, bars, uh, beauty salons, all that kind of stuff shut down. Um, unless you sell like groceries, and you like you have a convenience store that sells some sort of grocery or, or stuff like that. That's the way in Alberta as well, eh? Um, yeah, you can't you can't be open in Toronto. I think most parts of the GTA, grade seven and up are online learning. Oh wow, that's how they did it. Uh, move to Atlantic Canada is the answer. Yeah, but then we're gonna bring the COVID over there, Peter. Um, so I'm a teacher and and we're in and we're in school. Elementary schools are still in school. Yeah. Uh, restaurants are open in Illinois for takeout only. Yeah, restaurants are open for takeout only here as well. Um, but schools are still open, so that's... Catherine saying the U.S. seems to be ignoring the data. Yeah. Uh, Red Beer saying down here, South is open. I'm not too worried about it. Yeah, I think depending on the age, uh, Red Beer, I'm, I'm guessing you're around my age. Um, obviously I don't think we have much to worry about at our age. I know, I'm pretty sure I had it. My, the guy that films my, my videos, um, the guy that edits and films my videos had it. Uh, and I think, to be honest with you, I think I gave it to him, um, uh, because we were recording and then a couple, like a week later he got sick. I missed that comment. One sec. <sighs> Derek saying my kid's school is in hybrid thing. Yeah. This hybrid thing is a joke. Like it's... It's scary because it's really hard for teachers to to get <laughs> born in 1984. So we uh, we share that in common. Paul, was that Paul that said that? Or Redbeard? No, Redbeard. Sorry, Redbeard. Tyler. Yeah, uh, I'm born in 1984 as well. Hard for the kids too. The hybrid is really hard for the kids. Uh, you got it, Rob. How's your smell and taste? Honestly, um, the only thing I couldn't really like get everything out of was whiskey uh, food uh, I didn't really lose uh, my buddy had all the same symptoms as me uh, but he did lose his smell and taste he lost um, it for like a, a good month and a half to two months almost I want to say because no uh, I think it was just about a month um, but that's got to be a scary thing man losing your taste and smell obviously nowhere near as serious as losing your life or obviously anything like that but um, yeah I think a lot of the younger people are experiencing the smell taste thing. Shout out to the teachers right now. Just don't know how, what's going on in the households the children reside in. All through this. Yeah, honestly, it's scary, man. Uh, sometimes, for a long time, students were coming to school to get away from what was going on at home. And now that can't happen for some people. So uh, it's a scary time. It definitely is. Uh, hopefully, everybody's. Everybody in this chat and their families are safe and, and healthy because, I don't know, some of the things that are happening out there right now because of the lockdowns and all the other situations like the people losing their jobs, losing their businesses, losing their homes um, and lives for other reasons, not including or not because of COVID, but as a, like COVID as a catalyst because of the lockdowns and stuff like that. Uh, Derek is saying, I, th I honestly think it's going to get worse in the U.S. in January with the lockdowns, with new president. <sighs> yeah, yeah, I know. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. Um, the lockdowns are causing all kinds of other issues. I, I don't know. I, I don't know the data. I don't know if we should go too far into the data here. I don't know enough. I'm not a scientist to to say any more than I've already said. My brother's restaurant out in beaches, takeout only. Yeah, I, I think that if you had a business, like a restaurant that 
didn't have a lot of seating anyway. In, uh, Wyona. Okay. All right. So, okay. Um, if you had a business that didn't like need a lot of seating to survive, I think those were the business businesses that uh, that strived in this time because they were able to do their takeout, keep doing their takeout thing, and that actually um, kept them going. Um, some of the smaller businesses, the really small boutique like uh, dessert places and cafes and that kind of stuff, really thrived because it was quick, easy. People would pop in, pop out. Uh, and that's what they wanted anyway. And because of the stipulations around lockdowns and stuff like that, those smaller businesses did really, really well. But um, the karate place that I was renting a mat from, so um, Claire the Third saying here in Melbourne, Australia, or no, sorry, Clinton is saying, sorry, my apologies. Uh, I'm gonna read that. Here in Melbourne, Australia, we've. But we were locked down. Yeah. So they had a hard lockdown from March to September and it's gone from um, Australia. Uh, Paul is saying my brother was able to have outdoor seating across the neighborhood. Uh, two properties. That's good. That's good. Lucky him. Um, where was I going? Oh, yeah. The karate place that I was renting a mat from uh, had, had its fourth location opening up before... COVID started. So they're about to open up their fourth location. This guy's my age, so he's uh, 36 years old. Um, young family, fourth location. So he was doing really well with his karate uh, dojos. I rented a mat so I could teach Muay Thai uh, my five days a week at his location. Um, so I was teaching Muay Thai at his place. Obviously the lockdown happened, stopped doing that. Uh, had to pivot, we did outdoor classes, we did um, online classes like my wife's doing right now. Unfortunately, his business took a beating and he just closed his last location. So out of the four businesses that he was able to open or out of the four locations he was able to open pre-COVID, he had to close down all four. Um, so it's terrifying uh, when stuff like that happens. It's really sad. Young guy. Rebeer saying, uh, what style of karate? Um, honestly, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I can't say. I wasn't taking it. I was teaching Muay Thai, uh, Thai boxing. Um, I want to say the one you said there, though. That sounds about right. I could be wrong. It's the one that he was teaching, I was told, was like the hardcore, like, um, I, I, I don't know. I, I would be lying if I told you. Catherine saying lockdown is oddly really relaxing to me. I luckily can work from home and haven't uh, haven't been anywhere since March. Yeah, some people this this was just a quick pivot and you went back to like you know living a, a relatively normal life. Um, some people not so much. F fifty Marco is saying I'm late to the party. How's the bombers? Bombers are great. Uh, thanks for changing the subject. Um, Paul is saying. Me too, Catherine. Yeah, good. I'm glad that most people were able to do that. That's that definitely um, some of the, we are some of the lucky ones. I was able to do something similar as well. Bowmore Edition One, really, really good. I gave it an 86, and Bowmore Edition Two, really, really good as well. A little bit more peated than the Edition One, but that could be because the Edition One was opened a lot longer than the Edition Two. Um, both really good. Both. I'm afraid might not be worth 200 bucks or if they are to you, I suggest you try them before you buy them. Uh, I think these would have been like the kind of whiskeys that I buy once, I drink it, I enjoy it, I would have been happy with the purchase. I probably wouldn't have bought again at that price unless I found it for a very, very good deal. Uh, have you seen the fakeness that the TV show Moonshiners? <laughs> I've, I've actually um, saw a couple episodes that like, Clearly looks staged. So, yeah, I, I, I definitely know what you're talking about. <clears throat> so, 29 people in the chat. Santa Cruz is saying those guys are making bank. Yeah, <laughs> I'd say. 
$100 in the US. So for $100 US, I would definitely buy these. I would buy probably two of each. And I'm not saying that $70 breaks the bank, but I do think that that's the right evaluation for these whiskeys. I think Ontario has done what they normally do to Bullmore to actually not always Bullmore because some Bullmores are actually well priced, but what they've recently done to Bullmore, what they've always done to Ardbeg and Balvini, which is overpriced them compared to the world market, which is not fair to those companies, to be honest with you. <clears throat> Derek is saying, have a good night, brother. Cheers, buddy. Have a good one. I have to pick up the whiskey glass because I had the water in my hand. How do my kids let me record in peace? Great question. Um, we we put them to bed at 8 o'clock <laughs> and then I record after. So 90% of the time, I've had many comments saying this guy's clearly drunk and this guy is <laughs> polluted doing his videos. And it's my first whis like sip of whiskey or sip of alcohol for the entire night. And 99.9% .9 of the time, it's because I'm really tired. <laughs> so... Um, yeah, they're they're uh, they let us do our whiskey or our whiskey review or they let me do my whiskey reviews. They let my wife do her thing as well, but not till they go to bed. They sleep through like quite a bit. I hope I don't jinx it because I thought I just heard someone crying. <laughs> Jeremy's saying how much? How much what? Uh, oh, uh, I think Timothy was saying that the We Beastie is being released soon. Uh, the Diageo releases were a much better deal. Yeah, Diageo, for whatever reason, tends to be a great price at the LCBO. Um, Timothy is saying 75 Canadian for the Wee Beastie, if I'm not mistaken. And Catherine is saying, still thinking about uh, what to get uh, for the holidays. Pennsylvania is not known for their whiskey selection. Um... Will China saying, I mean, 150 might be overshooting it. Uh, are you talking about these? And then India saying, Ontario still haven't got the Wee Beastie. No, we haven't. Uh, Jeremy spent a lot of money on that Wee Beastie, um, but we haven't received it yet. So he had to buy it, like bring it in from somewhere else, and it ends up costing more that way. All right, getting close to an hour. I got mine for $70 in Alberta. Yeah, that's not a bad price. I think that's okay. Um, I mean, I, I do feel like the Wee Beastie should be less than 60 bucks, if I'm being completely honest. Wee Beastie is overrated. I think uh, you might be right. I haven't reviewed it yet, and I don't know if I will. Uh, I like Ardbeg, and I like the Wee Beastie. I just don't think... $70 is a fair price, although um, the 10-year-old is 100 bucks. I don't know. I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know what's fair anymore being in Ontario. I'm so jaded by price. Uh, I've shopped in Alberta for a long time, but still everything seems like a better price than what we get it for. It is what it is. Don't think uh, five-year... Um, <clears throat> that don't think of it as a five-year version of the 10-year yeah you're right um india's uh, um, peter white's talking to indy Riley saying the wee bc was good for the price around 70 bucks yeah you know what it's good i, I like it I, I have no beefs with it i've unlike uh my good buddy jeremy i actually like pretty much everything that ardbeg has put out recently Really like the two, uh, the uh, nineteen year old edition one. I haven't tried the edition two yet. Really like the Wee Beastie. I really like the um, the black. I haven't tried the black committee release, but I wanted to. Uh, just gonna go back there so I don't miss the, those last few comments. I'm waiting for Kavla to get here from Taiwan. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> oh, actually, maybe in Alberta you will. Um, not in Ontario. From Nova Scotia. I've been. Blending the Beastie with the Oogie and the 10-year. That's interesting. Uh, Will is saying the 19 must have been 
a nice purchase. Then, you know what? The 19 is really nice. Um, I just won the privilege of buying the black for two hundred dollars. Should I do it? No, not for two hundred dollars. The secondary price on the black makes no sense to me. Uh, the regular black is gonna be readily available for at least another year or two coming. Like, you still see the drum on shelves. I'm not sure why the black. Maybe because of the Pinot Noir casks, I don't know. But um, the regular black is not worth $200. If you can get it for less, I would get it for less. Is the Ardbeg 19 worth the price? That's a good question. So I got the Edition 1 from Nova Scotia for $277 originally. Um, then there was another one that I purchased for closer to $400. Didn't realize that the one that I was getting from Nova Scotia was the edition one i thought it was the edition two because it was so close uh to the edition two release um but in alberta the edition one is going for like 390 350 the lowest i thought i saw i think with a discount if you get a discount at any of the stores you're going to get it for around 370 but the by the time you get it here it's going to be close to 400 bucks um so Nova Scotia, for whatever reason, had an incredible price on the 19. Uh, but I, I still haven't tried the Edition 2, and I really want to try that. Daniel, the, the original Jabroni. I got it right here. I saw uh, Whiskey Throttle in the chat there. Got the original Jabroni over here. Um, that's for Daniel. This was purchased for me by uh, Jeremy. I don't buy toys usually, unlike my display shows. These are hockey players up here. I'm not sure if everybody's aware. I was wondering if you guys could make that out in the in the videos. And this is Jon Snow. This was a recent gift to me. These are apparently really popular and collectible. I don't, I don't know much about them, but a lot of fun. Daniel, what's going on, man? You sent my uh, you sent my whiskey to me yet, or what? Daniel and I um, made a purchase recent recently. A couple years ago, Ardbeg Kelpie was 136 for the committee release. Wow, that's crazy. I like my action figures from Jeremy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is uh, Jeremy's uh, purchase right here. He thought it would be a good idea for me to... Uh, <laughs> I was going to say something that would have sounded weird. Uh, he thought it was a good idea for me to bring this guy out whenever um, I got a super chat. For a while, I was thinking about doing that, but... Um, I don't know. Yeah. Whiskey throw. That's the jabroni right there, man. So if you were thinking about buying this and never got around to it or thought you missed out, you didn't. The more I taste it, the more it's like dropping below 80. It's just got that note and it's starting to creep into the unpleasant Deanston territory. <laughs> Can you smell? Spell it right here. <laughs> All right, Paul, take it easy, buddy. Thanks for dropping in. Thanks for the super chat. Thanks for the support. Is the Glemo cake? Uh, oh, the Glemo RNG cake a gimmick. Honestly, I heard great things, um, but then I also heard not so great things. So. I don't know. I've never tried it. Uh, some of the reviewers I trust gave it a great mark. Some of the reviewers I trust trashed it. It's one of those whiskeys. I don't know. I don't think it's for everybody. I think it's probably really sweet, to be honest. Um, whiskey in the six says, give me $20 and I will take the more lock off your hands. <laughs> I'm not giving you $20. You can take it. Um... Sorry about the shaky camera. Daniel's driving home from work. Be safe. Uh, DH Sales in the house saying Glenmore Limited Editions are always young and sweet. Uh, yeah, that's true, actually. I I did the Milshan or Milshan this year, and I actually liked it. Like It wasn't as sweet as I thought it would be, and a lot of people were trashing it because it was too sweet, but I didn't find it too sweet. 
India saying yes. When are the spring banks coming? I'm saving up for that. That's a good question, man. Like, it's like been a united silence about spring bank, Kilkerran, long girl, Hazelburn. Donner Pass just po uh, poured an old Pulteney 17. Great whiskey. Um, Catherine is saying, I find Glen Glenmorangies to be too sweet. Yeah, I can see that. My brother bought me, is it reachable? My brother bought me uh, a old Pulteney 21 for my birthday. Or he didn't buy it for me. He gifted it to me. Uh, he bought it a while ago, obviously, when it was still available. And then gifted that, that uh, whiskey to me for my birthday. He knew I would appreciate it more than he does. Uh, so thanks, Luke. He's a good guy. He's a good guy. Um, Peter White just killed the, the heel of the old Paltney 17. That 17, I did a review of it probably like my first or second year on the channel. I absolutely loved it then. Tried it again in a rundown. Uh, we did like almost all of the old and new old Paltney's except for like the really old ones. And... Um, it still ranked pretty high. The 21 ranked higher than I thought it would, too. Indy saying I should have bought a case of the La Forty Dark Oak. It's really good. It is really good. Very, very smooth. I wonder if it's chill filtered, though, because it's kind of like... Maybe the my one criticism of it is a, it's a little lacking in uh, viscosity. But it is really good. I got the sign bottle over here. How do you guys feel about sign bottles? I want to know. I want to know, know what you guys think about people that sign their whiskey bottles. What do you think about that? <laughs> Show up. Um, Donner Pat saying, oh, wait. Uh, nice, love that stuff. Just opened the last four ounces sample bottle, 20, old Polony 21. Um, yeah, it's good stuff. Will Chan is saying, no sign bottles, just my opinion, sign the box. Yeah, I agree. Um, DH Selves is saying, the signature ends up fading, so I just pop them open. Not a bad idea. Indy saying, I always sign my own bottles. <laughs> um, Redbeard, sorry. Uh, Redbeard is saying, getting going for the evening. Cheers. Cheers, buddy. Thanks so much for that huge super chat. I really appreciate it, buddy. Um, very, very kind of you. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about signed bottles, to be honest with you. I'm, I'm not sure I'm a fan. Uh, I think it inspires people to not open their whiskey, uh, which in today's day is not something that people need encouragement uh, to do because they're already, there's already too many people not opening bottles that they purchase in order to sell them later. Uh, Uncle Buck is saying, I have my local liquor store owner sign my uh, special bottle. Hold on. Sign my special bottles so he knows they aren't hitting the secondary. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Uh, Santa Cruz is saying, cheers, Red. Uh, India is saying, I caught, I caught a signed uh, drumstick. Oh, wow, that's pretty cool. That's different. A signed drumstick is pretty damn cool. Um... Will China saying, exactly, pop the damn cork and indulge in all those flavors. I agree. Peter White saying, I passed on engraving 15. Yeah, the 15 red letter you, you could have engraved. It, those are the types of things that cause people to not open stuff, right? Um, they wanted 10 more dollars. Uh, what was it? <laughs> what was going to be engraved? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe if you're gifting it to somebody, like, uh, you know, happy whatever birthday or whatever. I, I guess I, I could see that. But you, then you just keep the bottle. You still open it, right? Do you still saying, I'm telling Mike, any bottle he has over a year. <sighs> I get to open if he doesn't. That's awesome. I like that. That's a good rule. Stephen Connor in the house, he's saying, I have a signed 2012 Four Roses. Um, that's probably a really good one. 
by the master distiller, only one of them uh, kept opening them up. Yeah. I don't know. It, it's, it's one of those things where it's up to you, but uh, India is saying, wouldn't that tiny droplet after a pour fade the signature? Yeah, I don't think, I don't know what you could do. I guess you can, um, if you can avoid the signature, then it won't rub out. Sorry, you guys keep seeing my hand. Santa Cruz is saying, thanks to COVID, uh, I've damn near opened every <laughs> everything. Just kidding. Um, you know what? That's not necessarily a bad thing, I don't think. Well, it's bad if <laughs> if it's causing you health issues, but... Um, DHL is saying, hot or cold day, we'll fade it. All right. And there was one more comment. A hot or cold day, we'll fade it. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm not a fan of the signing of the bottle just because like, I don't want any people to have any more reason to not open their bottles. Uh, Will China saying, Santa Cruz in, that's going to be quite an infinity bottle, potentially. <laughs> potentially, yeah, exactly. Uh, what else are you spending your money on? So, I've spent a lot of money recently um, on whiskey. I brought most of it up here now, but there's still some of it that I need to review that I'm just like, it's going through its pre preliminary stages in my on my main floor. Yeah, uh, we <laughs> open everything, even backups. The H still is the same. A um, whole bunch of stuff over here that I got to get to, which is, I guess, common for this time of year because so many new whiskeys come out, and then um, you know you stock up when they're they're the new releases or whatever. Uh, so these will all be um, reviewed at some point within the next year but probably not before december well not probably definitely not before uh december dhs is asking if i uh snagged a aaron 25 i wish um it looks awesome i have not i got the 21 here 21 honestly i love the packaging the 25 looks incredible i love the packaging on the 21 I love the packaging on the 18 as well i'm not sure if i prefer the 18 over the 21 just yet The box doesn't work. What do you mean by that? So, the new Aaron bottles are cool. Yeah, they are cool. This is the 21 right here. Um, really like it. Thought the Octomore... Oh, thoughts on the Octomore 11.3. Honestly, I haven't tried it, and I don't plan on buying it because it's too expensive compared to what I used to get it. I used to get it at half the price, so for me to spend double... On something that's gonna taste probably very similar if not exactly the same um, it's tough for me to do there was a comment I missed the box won't close ah, then that all the more reason to open it right um, Steven is saying we need to trade some samples to DH Sills. yeah DH Sills has some awesome stuff um, Yeah, I feel like this whiskey gets better with time. It's starting to open up to where it needs to be. Uh, my first pour was really good, and then the next couple weren't as good. Uh, it's open already, buddy. I opened it after the gym tonight. Nice. All right, well, I, that sucks about the box. Uh, I hate when that happens, but usually those kind of boxes, you're best keeping the whiskey out of the box because like they tend to have a bit of a smell if you bring your nose really close to it and i don't think it can affect the whiskey but i don't want to like take any chances um yep too pricey it's about 340 us i'm guessing that's the air in 25 uh malt muser whiskey reviews what's going on buddy nice to see you in the chat he's saying hey folks how's it going man nice to see you Aaron 21 was like 160 at Zinn during Black Friday. That was a great price. Um, yeah, Eric's in the house. What's going on, man? Um, I see that last comment by Donner. 
My Paul John tubes smelled pretty uh, unique. Some of the tubes are a little weird smelling. Yeah, some of the tubes like are a little bit off-putting in smell, in my opinion. DHS is saying, I emailed Aaron and the store. See you, I can get it. Uh, yeah, they'll get, they honestly, companies are usually really good with that kind of stuff. If the box is broken, uh, if there's a, a faulty bottle or faulty cork or stuff like that, they, they tend to be pretty generous with uh, replacing it. They want you to have like a very good experience. I've had good experiences so far with emailing companies about that kind of stuff. So I wouldn't be surprised if you end up getting um, a replacement box, uh, Dustin. All right. Um, Terrence is saying recently stumbled on original Port Charlotte, uh, sixty five dollars U S. Good stuff. Honestly, Port Charlotte, for the price, they were doing incredible stuff. I hope it doesn't start to go up like the rest of the Octomore line. Uh, that's pretty good to hear. I've been doing some woodworking tonight. Turns out I'm not Ron Swanson. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's okay, man. No, I, honestly, I do think they'll replace that box for you. Um, okay, so I'm going to try to go live uh, once a week, building up to the 18th. So that would only be, I guess, one more week. What day is today? I don't even know what day it is anymore. Um, the 18th is next Friday. So uh, I lied. Uh, I am going to go live once a week until the 18th because I'm going live right now. Uh, we did go live last week as well on Jeremy's channel and the week before on my channel. Uh, we're trying to scaffold it, but we're gonna we'll probably do more as the days uh, go by as lockdown continues and there's not much else to do. Uh, hopefully you guys are doing well. I promise that the next one will be uh, better technology and <laughs> all that other stuff. Sorry about the hand reaching for my phone. Uh, my wife, like I said, was doing a fitness class. Um, my review should be up on Wednesday or Thursday. It's on the Balvini 14-year-old Pete Week, which I was pleasantly surprised with. I think um, you guys might enjoy that review. And then the on the Monday after that, I have the Wild Turkey 17-year-old uh, Bottled in Bond review coming out. Also very impressed with that whiskey. And then <clears throat> the following Friday is the big live with Scott and Roy and Jason, Narby and Jeremy, of course. Um, so stay tuned for all those things, guys. Really appreciate the support on the Super Chats and the Dram crew, the Sixer crew that's joined uh, to get the Mystery Dram once a month on my Patreon. That, that's also very awesome. Had some like really cool and uh, quick response on people very interested in being part of that crew uh only 30 spots so it's gonna go i guess pretty quickly but um i guess we'll have to make a new tier after that of something else um guys thank you very much sorry if i missed your comments tonight you guys are all awesome <laughs> if narby is there it's over <laughs> uh thanks guys really appreciate you guys jumping in take it easy Cheers. This is going to be interesting.